candidate of APC. Former Governor of Borono State, Alaji Kashim Shatima. Honorable Minister for Women Appears, the chairperson of this organization, the ladies of Nigeria, the women of Nigeria, it's my singular honor and privilege to stand before you. Although I'm not a prince, the two princes had earlier spoken eloquently, especially the Ibera prince from Okene. The ultimate measure of assessing any society is the way they treat their women. And there is even a saying amongst the Pante people of Ghana, educate a man, you have educated an individual. Educate a woman, you have educated a nation. And my sisters, the most important thing I want to emphasize is that it's easy to talk. But can we walk the talk? That's the million dollar question. As I have always said, in 2023, we are not preparing for the Olympics, but an institution that relies preparing for the Olympics but an institution that relies on the superiority of ideas and track records to show. And what are our track records? Ashwaji Bola I'm a Tinubu. was the first governor in Nigeria to appoint a woman as his deputy governor. When he finished his term, his two terms as the governor, of Lagos State, you were given the opportunity to come to the Senate, but he said, no, I won't come. I would rather send a woman to represent the constituency of Lagos Central, which is the most largest and the most vital of all the senatorial zones in Lagos. These are established track records that you can take us to task on. Why the first female chief judge in Nigeria hails from? Who appointed the first female chief judge in Nigeria? These are pertinent questions that I want you to scrutinize. Twelve years ago, when I became the governor of Borno State, I appointed five female commissioners. Twenty-five percent of my commissioners were women. Dr. Asabe Bilita Bashir, the current director of the Women Development Center, was in my first cabinet. So also was Dr. Zeynep Gimba. Zeynep Gimba is currently the member of the House of Reps representing Bama, Dikwa, Kala, Belge, Peril constituency. So also was Dr. Selma Anas Kolo, my Commissioner of Health, and Mrs. Inna Galadima, the Commissioner for Women Affairs. So an Ashwaju administration will be a government that will be friendly to our women. Most importantly, they are the backbone of our society. They constitute over 50% of our total population. So due to paucity of time, I will be very brief in my remarks. And if Nigeria is to reach its full, fullest potential, we must give every person and segment of the population a fair chance to make their best contributions to the well-being and betterment of our nation. The growth of our economy and the achievement of our national destiny rests on equity and the safeguarding of the fundamental rights and decency in our society. This means ending all forms of invidious biases, including most especially gender discrimination, equity, and fairness to women 
will be a top priority of the Tinubu administration. We shall establish the following programs and policies, and you can take us to task to promote more female inclusion in politics and governance. One, social inclusion and political empowerment. Two, economic empowerment whereby commercial banks will be encouraged, will be compelled to support women, women-owned businesses nationwide through the use of concessionary loan and incentive schemes. And of course, fighting domestic violence and abuse. Educational parity and helping the most disadvantaged in our society. My sisters, unless the women folk of Nigeria are suffering from Stockholm Syndrome, Ashwaju is married to the same woman for the past 40 years. There are some of the candidates who see women as tools of pleasure, as chattels to be discarded every cycle to be replaced by a new lady. <laughs> Unless the women of Nigeria have lost their senses or suffer from Stockholm Syndrome, I see no reason why. When you have seen a winning team, and what matters is not the geography of our places of worship, no. What matters is the competence, is the quality, is the track record of our presidential candidates. I want to commend my younger brother here. He's a very brilliant, very eloquent young man. But I believe that experience is not something that you can buy in the marketplace. We have garnered the experience, we have garnered the track record of excellence and achievement. And my sisters, there are two functions taking place simultaneously here. The governor of Kano is launching a book, but I said, no, I have to come and honor our sisters, our mothers, before going to honor the governor of Kano State. That goes to show our commitment to our women, to our mothers, to our sisters, to our wives. And you can hold us responsible we are ready to sign any document because our word is our bond. I crave your indulgence to take my leave to go and appreciate the governor of Kano State. Beyond that, you can count on us. We are one of you and you are one of us. Thank you so much.